This is my OnePlus 8 Pro setup. Let's do it. So first we're going to dive into the main phone settings for the OnePlus 8 Pro, but if you don't care about that, then a timestamp for the launcher and home screen is on the screen now. So after you enter the display settings and then the advanced settings, I first put it on vivid from screen calibration because that was my favorite color option. Then for the resolution, I changed it from 1080p to 1440p, high resolution though you're compromising battery life. And then I made sure that I didn't want to hide the cutout so I left that on default. And then I changed it from 60 to 120 hertz so it can feel faster and I get a better experience. And then next, once you're back in the display settings, you can change the vibrant color effect on and off. I wanted that on, it looks better, taking advantage of the AMOLED display. And then you have motion graphics smoothing, which basically upscales 24 frame videos to suit that 120Hz display. And then at the very bottom at the status bar, I only had the battery percentage shown, everything else I wanted off because I like to have a clean status bar, with the exception of the time. And then once you're out of display settings, then I went into customization. And from there, you can choose the accent color for the whole UI. And I stuck with the original, which was this baby blue. And then you can change from dark mode to light mode to this sort of light color mode. I prefer dark mode, obviously. And then you can change the shape of the icons in the quick panel. And I just left it at the standard circle. And then from there, you can get your own icon pack or use the pre-installed ones. So the name of my icon pack is Pure Icon Pack and the link for that will be in the description below. And this is how it looks like. It's got this really minimal look to it and I personally I just really like it. So you wanna download it, just download it from the Play Store link below. So once you're out of the icon pack, you have one more setting within the customization setting and that's to change your font for the UI from OnePlus, Slate, or Roboto. I decided to stick with Roboto because I preferred the way that it looked. And then the final setting that we're going to go into is button and gestures. And for navigation, I was using the navigation gestures where you swipe up to go home, swipe and hold for recent and swipe from the side to go back. And I didn't want that bottom bar, so I disabled it. Uh, and this was in comparison to the home back and recent button, which I'm not a big fan of. The other option you have is to press and hold the power button for the Google Assistant or Alexa, and to do that, all you gotta do is download the Alexa app. Now, if you go down to where it says draw V, you can basically do this V gesture on the lock screen, and it will trigger whatever you want it to. I have it to the flashlight, and it is so useful. You can map it to other shapes as well, like the O and the M shape and all that. So that flashlight one has actually been low-key really useful. And now before we move on to the launcher and its settings, if you scroll down to utilities, you'll see an option called App Locker. Now this feature is so useful. It allows you to lock an app with your fingerprint and a passcode. And I use it for Evernote. And this is one of those things which is incredibly well optimized. Usually with these sort of Android features, you find that it doesn't seem to be very well optimized and linked with the software. But with OnePlus, like the rest of their software, this applies. It is very well optimized and it's done very well. So that's it for my personal settings. I always recommend just running through the settings, doing your own thing, figuring it out. And yeah, so let's just get into the launcher. So real simply, you want to download Launcher 2 from the App Store. See what they did there with the name? Yeah, it's kind of cool. But don't worry about anything, it's free. And this launcher resembles a stock Android kind of vibe. So all you got to do is once you've downloaded it, set it as your home launcher and you're good to go. So just follow the instructions I give you if you want to get the exact same or a similar setup to mine. And what you're getting is a pretty minimal looking home screen and setup, a minimal app drawer, which is set up into tabs with a Google feed to your very left, which is awesome that that's there. So yeah, let's do it. So to access the launcher settings, all you got to do is hold on the home screen in the blank area and press home settings. Once you're in there, first thing we're going to do is go into the themes at the very, very top. Now after having downloaded a icon pack or the one I showed you earlier or you just might want to stick with the default one, you can go into the icon packs at the top and choose which icon pack you want to use. So like I said, mine is pure icon pack, which remember is linked below. So for the shape of the icons, I chose a circle. I think that's the most cleanest looking shape. And then I went into more settings and turned on create adaptive icons so that icons that don't look the way you want them to will be slightly adjusted to suit the rest of the icons. 
And then of course if you go to appearance you can choose whether you want dark mode enabled, disabled, following a schedule, following the main phone settings. And then you can have it either in a pure black dark mode or a softer dark grey kind of dark mode. I have no idea what dark text means. Then if you go into accent color you can change the color of what is used for all the buttons and those extra sort of colors. I put it at Google Blue. And then for blur background pages, I had the blur intensity at 100%. And then finally, if you go into the fonts, you can choose what font is used for the launcher, whether you want it to be for a specific feature within the launcher or whether you want it to be the global font. So I left everything at default except for the at a glance font and I changed it to Google Sans Bolt. And at a glance is that Google like widget on the home screen that we'll come to in a little bit of time. So moving on desktop so first off i needed to change the icon grid to 10 by 6. this was so that i can get that format that i wanted to of a bunch of apps in the bottom right corner so i can access them all from my right hand without having to strain or stretch at all and then underneath that first thing i wanted to do was hide the labels so i didn't have any labels on my apps it looks cleaner that way and then i had the icon size kept at 100 percent so for app launch transition, I left it at default, which is the animation for an app when it opens. So you can play around with that if you want. And then for notification dots, I had that on and I also had a notification count on. So it tells you how many notifications you have in a little circle next to the app icon. Then I hid the status bar, which is the battery and time and notifications at the top of the phone. So when it's on the home screen, that doesn't exist and it's cleaner. I had wide widgets off and center wallpaper off. So the home screen moves when I slide through pages on the home screen. Next up is at a glance. So in here, first thing I did was I wanted the date and time on. I had the large clock off. I had the option to hide my status bar off and I wanted to use the 24 hour format. Instead of that design, you get the option to use a pill sort of look. So that looks kind of cool. And then for weather, my weather source was the Google app. You can change that up if you want to, but I trust Google. Temperature was in Celsius. And then for data sources, I had everything on except notifications. So basically, I get battery, I get little messages like good night, and then I also get my calendar on there. You have the option for notifications, I didn't like that. And next up is dock. Now the dock being the bottom section on the home screen, I had the dock style at custom, I had show background on, I had background color set by theme, and I had show shadow on, and a corner radius at 24, which was the absolute max. And then for the opacity of the dock, I had that at 54% with the dock size at auto. I had show arrow and page indicator on, which is right above the dock, and I had the icon count at 5, which was the original. Hide labels was on, and the size of my icons was 115%. And finally at the bottom, I had the search bar on, and I had color icons on, so that the Google logo has color to it. So next up is search. So for the main settings, my search engine was Google and I had show voice search button on and everything else was left on default. For the dock, I had the search bar on and the color icons on and the color was set by theme. And then for the drawer, I had show search bar on and everything off so I could search my apps instead of Google. So for how I got the Google feed on my home screen, that was through the plugins. So after opening plugins, it basically gave me a link to download Google feed. It you open a link, you download the APK file, you press install, and then you just turn it on from the plugin settings, and you're good to go. There's another plugin called Sesame, I don't actually know what it does, so you can look into that, but the same would apply. And what I did here was I chose that the background color would be in dark mode instead of light mode, so it would go with the rest of the phone. And before we get into the app drawer settings, I just want to say that everything else was left at default and you can back up anything that you set up and you can restore it. So you're moving from one Android to another, you can restore your setup that you made on your original phone and then download it and restore it from Google Drive or whatever. So now for the drawer. So the opacity was at 100%, the background color was set by theme, which was black, the icon size was at 114%, and then for the column count, that was 5, like the dock, and the row height was 100%, and I had the labels hidden. 
Then everything else was left the default, but the important part was the categories. So instead of using folders, I kind of categorized my apps into the main drawer and then different sections that you could swipe through. So if you go into categories, you can choose folders or tabs. I chose tabs and then created a new tab and then I made a manual one, not an automatic one. So it didn't make its own groups for me. So making it a custom manual one, you choose the name, choose a color if you want. I didn't put a color and then choose which apps you want in there and you can change the order of which tab comes first so it's as simple as that and it's really clean to use and that's it for how i set it up and that's how you get that kind of look the goal was that it's minimal and functional you know it's really quick and easy to navigate through i can access all my apps with one hand but now i want to talk about the music widget on my right home screen so let's get into that so the name of the app is audio widget pack it will also be linked below by the way so it's a free app and it comes with free widgets and paid widgets the free widgets come in in dark and light mode and they have a variety of different options for the way that they look so that's really really awesome so and it also connects to anything that's currently playing whether it's youtube whether it's spotify whether it's itunes it'll connect to whatever media is being played it's really simple it's low key you choose which mode you want to use and you can play skip pause choose where you want to listen to in a song all of that so for free it looks good it gets the job done i definitely recommend just adding this to your home screen whether you're on a launcher or not so yeah that is it for the setup i hope you guys managed to recreate your own version of the setup if that's what you were going for and i hope you guys like the way it turned out there is a bunch of other launchers nova launcher hyperion some are paid some are free so go check those out if you just want to mess around with it this is the best thing about android so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like and a comment if you want to because it really helps with the youtube algorithm and putting my video up and even more so please subscribe that really means a lot to me i'm trying to work my way up it's still quite a small channel check out my instagram and twitter at the romil nagar for a behind the scenes perspective of when i'm posting my next video what it's about so and so feedback all of that and that is it i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one salam <laughs>